Hello there. Um, I hope you noticed that I've got updates to my avatar. It looks really cool now. If you look at the old hand that my avatar had, it's like, ah, what the fuck is that? <laughs> so I wanted to talk about a less happy topic. So the rest of this tone of this video is probably going to be a bit somber, but basically uh, the NTSJW people have been talking a lot about pedophilia online at the moment. So I briefly spoke about this in a video addressed to Blair White after I saw her video about this. And basically, if you didn't see that, it was basically me just saying, no, the left is not endorsing pedophilia. On the left wing and the right wing, though, there are pedophiles. Anywhere on the political spectrum, you're going to have these people. Sadly, pedophilia hasn't only recently become a problem online, so I'm not sure why people are acting as if it's just become a problem recently. This has been a problem since very early on in the internet, probably its inception. I remember back in the late 2000s when 4chan became a minefield for it, and that's basically why I stopped using it when I was a teenager. Firstly, I wanted to give some general information about this issue. I had a look at some of the information on a government website from my country. It's called Child Family Community Australia. So I didn't go chasing through every single source that they put up there. I'm just taking it on face value. So it's up to you whether you want to accept these sources or not. I don't care. <laughs> if you're wondering why I said that, it's just I get a lot of comments that are like, oh, that source you gave isn't good enough. And I just, I can't be bothered anymore. Children often sadly don't report that they are being abused. A study also found that children who have seen offensive content online won't tell their parents. Another piece of information, sex offenders can be young or female, but the majority have been found to be male and mature aged. However, a study presented different figures that just under a third of se child sex offenders were female based on reports from children, as well as many of the perpetrators being younger than previously thought. I want to mention here that the quote from this article that the internet is being used by pedophiles to legitimise, reinforce force and facilitate sexual in inclinations was something said in 1999, just to illustrate how long this has been a problem. This is important to me to mention because I do think that there's been a lot of exaggeration about these ideas that pedophiles have as if it's something recent. The pedophiles who are trying to co-opt the LGBT movement have it in their interest to present this as if it's bigger than it is to normalise their ideas. An Australian study conducted in 1998 found that pedophilic content could be accessed on publicly available websites. There is another organisation I'd like to mention which is NAMBLA. Now this organisation promotes pedophilia basically in short and every extent of pedophilia. They've been around for a long time now and have even had a South Park episode dedicated to mocking them. As much as in a way I wish pedophiles organising themselves into groups was all a new thing, this has been a problem for basically forever. But on the bright side there are many people working to stop these individuals. According to this source it suggests that how pedophiles aim to normalise this abuse is more in the images themselves by presenting them on all sorts of platforms and using images where children have a sort of happy or neutral expression while engaging in these acts as well as the acts themselves taking place in a domestic setting like a kitchen or a home. The goal of this is to normalise pedophilia and to perhaps reduce adult inhibition to it. It's also within their interest to expose this content to as many people as they can. That's more how they're working to normalise it, not through trying to use leftist ideas, because it all falls apart in a leftist stance because children can't consent. Anyway, I found something else that isn't really quite that related, but I wanted to throw it in there because it's really interesting, so there's going to be a link in the description, but there was a Vice article about this. Uh, somebody had accessed the deep web, looked through some of the stuff there, and then found a website which basically hosted a lot of pedophilic content, and he hacked all of these, um, well, 10,000 of them, and took them down, so I thought that was really cool. The study linked in the description from the University of Applied Sciences, Lee Warden, details some of the risks and challenges to overcome when dealing with child pornography online. Most browser-based pedophilic content has been blocked, but when it comes to filtering, it's very difficult to filter 100% of the content without over-filtering. It is possible to filter things from the internet as countries like trying to prove, but it's also an example of a country with very excessive filtering in place. 
The Chinese government also dedicates a lot of resources to ensuring this is the case. This paper also recognizes that the legislation-wise things need to change in many countries in order to censor child pornography. Within America, the First Amendment does pose a risk to child pornography censorship, and so there needs to be an addendum to the law to it to exclude uh, child pornography so it can lawfully be censored. This paper also recognizes that child pornography isn't equally illegal in every country, which makes it difficult given that the internet is global. For an example of this, I can draw from uh, my country in particular, where any depiction of a minor, whether it's actually a minor or not, is illegal, like if it's in a sexual way. So lollycon or women who are 18 but don't look 18, that's all considered one and the same as if it was a child. So there are problems I've noticed where I'll be on Tumblr or something and looking up something about an anime or whatever, and then next thing you know, I've got lollycon in my face and I'm like, ugh, gross, and that's illegal in my country, so people in my country could go to jail for accidentally finding something they weren't looking for. It's unlikely, because usually the people who are caught are, like, caught with gigabytes and gigabytes of that shit, but it's, like, it's kind of scary to think that because America doesn't have the same laws, I could go to jail for looking at something, and that's sort of a problem we're seeing, because whether you want to see things or not online, you're bombarded with them sometimes. I think that a lot of the other laws need to reflect ours as well in that way, because I think any depiction of a minor, whether it's actually a minor or not, is problematic. So an organisation known as Internet Watch Foundation has compiled a list of numbers which are associated with images of this sort. These codes can be cross-referenced to images uploaded on sites like Facebook and Twitter in order to automatically censor known pedophilic images. This has been great for a lot of reasons, but it's also got some problems because it only works for known pedophilic content. According to The Australian, two of the largest internet service providers in Australia agreed to a scheme which would censor access to child pornography sites while using their services. This happened back in 2011. Now maybe you're wondering why I've given all this information. The reason that is I don't like these anti-SJW channels that are spreading this idea that this is just suddenly a big issue that's taking place and that nobody's talking about it and nobody's working towards solutions except for them. It's also not something that the left broadly endorses, no. LGBTP, as in pedophilia, is never going to be a thing. That's not a thing people say. Okay, maybe pedophiles do, but generally that's not the accepted ideas. Anyway, people often talk about the Salon article here um, featuring a pedophile. I read the article, it was called I'm a Pedophile, Not a Monster, and I, it really wasn't what people were saying it was. I thought it would be basically him advocating pedophilia, but it wasn't. He basically was just saying that currently the way we deal with the problem is by pushing it underground, which is actually worse. I tend to agree that pushing the problem underground has made it worse, because now the people who pedophiles come forward to about their perversion is other pedophiles, and then they get together, and then they convince themselves it's okay, and that is more dangerous than if they had a place they could come forward to who would tell them that yes, pedophilia is wrong, and you know, something like that. I don't think that what was being advocated there was awful, like the idea of not pushing this problem underground to me is sensible so I don't get the hysteria. Now there were parts of the article I had an issue with like, and, and things he said in videos I'm not sure if it was all in the article basically there were things he said like that you could trust pedophiles to babysit your children who are like himself that is too much to ask a parent to trust you with their children. That's not going to happen. There are also problems I had with some of the tone I think was a bit, oh feel sorry for me and didn't like that. Really it wasn't nearly what it was being made out so anyway, I'm a little bit concerned making this video because I think that the potential for being taken out of context here is pretty huge so I'm gonna try not to say anything to uh, that could too easily be taken out of context. Anyway thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! And so I wanted to say a quick thank you to my patrons, uh, Liz Agrigren, uh, Maverick2789, Robinette Kesman, Philip Moriarty, Sean and Jen, Josh Carter, Some Random Geek, Shadrach Mould, Charles Fleming, Sam Wearing, Michael Rollins, and Brandon Murphy. There's also a couple of others who have asked not to be mentioned by name, so I just want to say a big thank you to you as well. Thank you very much.